What's up? Active Pandas, Peter Von Panda here. I uh, bought these Design for City Sports Bone Conduction headphones. Got these on Amazon. I want to unbox them for you, and I'm going to give you a couple of quick warnings. You know, not bad warnings so far. But uh, my other bone conduction headphones broke, and I'm really uh, turning into a big fan of them. Uh, they, they just, to be honest, it's more of like the safety, you know, was kind of what got me into it. The idea that you could hear what's going on around you while being active and still listening to music and podcasts. You know, if you're a biker, jogger, I think you really need bone conduction headphones just as a matter of, you know, being safe, being uh, active and aware of your surroundings. But the reality is they're just really convenient for having a conversation with, for taking calls, uh, the whole nine yards. Now, like I said, my, my warning about these is I picked them up on Amazon. So far, my first impressions look good. Uh, I did buy them. And the reason I mentioned that is because they were not fulfilled by Amazon, right? So... Uh, fulfilled by Amazon often means two-day shipping, prime shipping, and this was not that. Uh, they ended up taking, oh, let's call it a month. It may have been a little over three weeks, but it took a while, and I, you know, it took long enough that I actually even forgot about them and then emailed the company, and they were very nice, but they didn't have any tracking information. Now, they did end up coming, so it wasn't a scam by any means, but it kind of was a little bit of... Um, you know, a trade-off in that these were basically the cheapest bone conduction headphones I could find. Um, I will look up the price on them, but I thought they were sub thirty bucks, and they were they were they were the cheapest of the sub thirty dollar bone conduction headphones. Now I've also shown you some other ones. Check out my other videos for uh, some that I think were really good, and they were under thirty bucks as well, and they came very very quickly. But this these at least had the look of some other features. It's hard to tell on the Amazon listing that I think made them kind of, you know, punch in a different weight class than some of the other cheaper ones, which aren't adjustable. The ones that I was thinking about most are those purple ones that I showed you, which don't have an adjustable headband. Now, I will show you here, we have looks like a silicone uh, spacer here to kind of take up some slack as well as give you some cushioning. That's kind of a nice feature that you don't get on these. Um, you know, I have them, had them on my Aftershocks, which are the ones that broke. And it looks like you have kind of a big thick housing here for probably the battery and the electronics on both sides. You have a pretty nice, um, you know, molded plastic uh, kick up here for uh, going over the ear. Then these press right on your cheekbones in front of your ear. Uh, looks like pretty nice rubber pads under there on both sides. Uh, I'm not sure what the opening here is for. I'm going to see if there's... I think that's probably the microphone. Maybe these are just for venting out a little bit. You have a, looks like a play button on this side. Looks like that's the only button. So that's probably play, pause, and answer the phone or hang up a call. You also have some buttons here on the bottom. We have the micro USB cover right here for charging it. We have a, this looks like it's the power button, I'm guessing. And then we have plus and minus, which is usually volume up volume down and then advance or uh, rewind and it's usually a tap for one either volume up or advance and then a hold down for volume up or advance I'm not sure which one yet so I'm just gonna hold down this power button here and see if we have a charge uh, so it's not look like anything's happening yet so I might have to charge these up and then we'll uh, test them out and see how they work charged up here we're gonna hit the power button again and see if we can get them to come on and I think to get in pairing mode I, I'm gonna turn it on usually it'll go to pairing mode immediately but I'm gonna hold down the power button while I'm turning it on and look I'm getting a quick flashing red and blue so I think that means it's in pairing mode and I guess it's coming up is wind shear so let's go ahead and see if that's connected now all right so I think it's connected. Let's try just it out. Just gonna slip it on here. And there's no way to adjust it physically. So you just kind of snug it down and then that silicone tensioning strap is what's going to kind of, you know, hold it in place. Now, as you might be able to see here, what I usually like doing, even though I have my glasses on, um, I usually like getting the bars of the headphones on the bone conduction earphones, you know, behind the, the lobes of my ears just to kind of brace it in place. I will tell you that it's pretty tight, like I've got a wide friggin' face, and so it's it's pressed together on my cheeks pretty tightly already. If you have a skinnier face, probably just not quite as much tension, but I think the point is that they're trying to get these pads right up against your cheekbones. Now I do have them right in front of my ears. I really have to kind of tug on it 
to get it any further, but I could. Oh, I already started. I hit the power button and I, uh, I ended up hitting play. So, and I could hear it, so it works. All right, so we're on. Let's let's stop fooling around with that. And I'm just gonna hit some music here. Doing a little Body Like a Back Road by Sam Hunt. And I'm not sure if you can hear it, but it's pretty loud right now. I can feel it, it's kind of tingly right there. But I could definitely be outside working out, running, working in the yard, listening to podcasts, listening to music, listen to radio. The sound is really going to depend on how well you have it connected to your cheekbones. And then if I hit this, what I want to show you here, if I hit the power button on the side right here, do I hit it? Nope. There, you can see it pauses it. Now if I hit it again, it's going to play it. Now one of the things, you know, the drawbacks of the bone conduction headphones is that if you like your music loud, what you're going to have is a lot of ambient radiation of the sound. Even though it's working by vibration, they do kind of work like a little speaker, so they put out noise. And so I'll be really quiet here for a second, and you can tell me if you can hear uh, Sam Hunt. So if you can hear it, people pretty close to you can hear it, but perfect for biking, walking, jogging, whatever. Um, now I will say this is a little loud, which is maybe why I'm kind of yelling so much. Uh, so I'm going to turn it down here. Now this is a nice comfortable background level for me. Um, and I really like them, you know, open ear so I can hear other things. You know, even though I had a tendency to shout there because they were pretty loud, you don't usually have that tendency quite as much with bone conduction. So overall i like it you know this it's it's got a nice feel nice construction it's got this nice um polished kind of glossy white finish to it and it fits my head just fine and i'm assuming that if you have a smaller head this will probably even fit you a little bit better um just a kind of nice overall shape and again super super cheap so that's what i like most about it again i'll remind you for me it took about a month to receive them so keep that in mind if you do order these you're gonna Maybe pay a little bit of a price on the uh, timing of the gratification. But I like it. Bone Conduction Headphones. Peter Von Panda. Out!